Welcome to our second video for lecture 7 during week 8. This video is going to be on combinational circuit synthesis. So, as a digital system designer, you will be given some description in order to create uh, and design and create a system. As you already know, that can be a Boolean expression, a truth table, or its equivalents, the list of mean terms or max terms or a logic diagram including N or not. Also, you can be given a textual description. Now, the best way to understand this is via this example. Suppose that you're given a design of a system uh, as uh, something to create, and your task is to make this design detect one and prime numbers. Now pay attention in a four bit word. From this description, you can directly extract the mean terms. So we have a four bit word, which means that the input has four different variables. Therefore, the mean terms that you can have, or the size of the truth table is two in the power of four. This gives you 16 different combinations. What you want is this function to output one for input which is equal to 1, equal to any other prime number. As you know, the prime numbers are those numbers that are dividable only with themselves and 1. So that coincides with the uh, mean terms for the prime numbers. So the uh, mean term for input equal to 1 is mean term 1, which is the second mean term in the truth table. Then for prime number two, it's the sec it's uh, uh, the mean term two, three, five, and so forth. Now, if you didn't understand exactly this example, try to write down the truth table, identify the inputs to the truth table that are equivalent to one or another prime number, and then uh, make sure that your function outputs one for this inputs, then try to find the mean terms and you will realize that this is the function. Now let's focus on another example in order to understand better what synthesis is. Suppose you're given this description in English using AND, OR, and NOT. The example is as follows. The alarm output is 1 if the panic input is 1, or if the enable input is 1, the existing input is zero, and the house is not secure. And what does this mean? The house is secure if the window, the door, and the garage inputs are all one. Now let's try to write that down. We see that the alarm is a function which should yield one According to this description, if the panic is true or the enable button and not the existing and not the secure variables are true. Now pay attention, we're using a dash for the existing because in the textual description you see that the existing input is expected to be zero. As for the secure variable, well, it's given in a different way. Instead of saying that the input should be zero, it says that the house is not secure, which is more explicit. Now, what does secure mean? It means that the window and the door and the garage are all one. So once you get this English language description, you're supposed to be able to write it down carefully in the form of uh, a logic function using OR, AND, and NOT. So having that said, you can rewrite the alarm function and this time include everything. It's panic or enable and not exiting. And 
window and door and garage not true which means not secure I would suggest that you pause the video at this moment and take a careful look at all these three equations and how they are the translation of this uh, natural language uh, expression over here Now let's take the previous alarm logic function and try to uh, convert it to a circuit. So the first thing that we have here is panic being given as an input. If you take a closer look here, you see that it's one component of an OR operation and then everything else is connected via an end. So what leads to the alarm output one input of it at least is the panic. Now let's focus on the enable and not existing. Those two they have to go through an end together. So you get the enabled and you get the existing which is here negated and you're missing another part for the end operation. As you can guess this should be another sub-function of window, door, and garage, negated. You start with the negation here, and you have another end gate with three inputs, window, door, and garage. Now let's use the Morgan. More specifically, let's focus on the window, door, garage here. Now by using the Morgan, the dash, disappears and you change the end operations to OR operations while the window, the door and the garage they are uh, replaced by their complements. Now the next thing to do is use distributivity which is going to allow you to convert the function from what is here to what you see over here. So the alarm is panic or enable and not exi exiting and not window. Or enable and not exiting and not door. So we are using distributivity here again and then Again, we are using distributivity, enable and exiting, and garage. Connected with an or with rest. So the final step here gives us that the alarm is equal to panic or a situation where it is enabled, nobody is exiting. And the window, I suppose you suppose that this should be the window is uh, not closed or it is enabled, uh, no one is exiting, and the door is not closed, or the alarm is enabled, no one is exiting, and the garage door is not secured. Now, let us take a moment, pause the video, take a look at this extended form of the alarm function and try to validate that what you see over here is what is expressed by the function over here. Yes, it's the panic or all these things over here. So you've got an end operation. This end operation is between the enable, the not exiting and the not window and so forth. You do the same thing for this second line over here and for the third line over here. And everything goes through a final OR. As you can see, we have two levels here. Essentially, this is already a sum of products. Now let us return to our first example, the one according to which we want a function that identifies one or the uh, prime numbers assuming a four bit input stream. Now, if you convert this list of min terms here to 
truth table it should look like this so the logic end for input which is equal to zero should yield zero because this is not a prime number for the special case of one as input we want this to yield one and then for two three five seven 11 and 13 on only for these inputs we want the function to yield one because these are prime numbers so let's write that down by using this list of mean terms the canonical mean term list the one that you use that you need to use in order to come up with the sum of products the function is going to look like this. So once again, here is the canonical sum that you identified from the uh, natural language expression of the design. Um, and this is what you get as the canonical sum using the mean terms. So this is the sum of products. If we focus on uh, the first product over here it's the negation of n3 you see it here the n2 dash and one dash and n0 dash so since we're using mean terms here this means that that would represent number <clears throat> zero 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 one so that is for number one here which will be identified as uh, one passed to the or function here and the output would be one and so forth you do the same thing for all of the other terms to be sure that uh, your circuit works the way that it is expected as a final comment before we close this video when you're dealing with a lot of inputs to an or gate you just extend it visually like that by using an extension line here and extension line here. And of course you do the same thing uh, if you had to use an AND gate. Once again, let me remind you that we have only two levels here, one for the AND gates and another one for the OR gates. Now, as a small exercise for you, please try to apply De Morgan and convert that to using only NAND gates or only NOR gates. As you've seen in the previous video, this is very, very easy to do. And with that, we conclude the second video for week eight, or otherwise, if you prefer it, lecture seven.